Adams, Williams, and now Rodgers? Oh my. But the defense needs to see the wizard in order to slow down the aggressive Panthers attack. Game three of our eight-game playoff continues in Carolina next on your Packers Fan Podcast. Hey, Packers fans, this is your unofficial Packers fan podcast, and these are the podcasters you're looking for. One of these guys actually kissed the magical 13 and a half yard line, and the other guy will challenge you to a game of pinball anytime. And now it's time to go, Pack, go with your hosts, Wayne Henderson and Troy Heinrichs. Thanks for joining us on your Packers Fan Podcast. It's the show by and for fans of the 13-time NFL champion Green Bay Packers. Give us a call after this week's game. We want to share your voice on next week's episode. Call us at 920-3-PACK-GO or just go to PackersFanPodcast.com slash feedback. This time around, it's episode 149 of your Packers Fan Podcast, recorded December 13th, 2017, and we will have links and show notes at PackersFanPodcast.com slash 149. On this week's show, we're going to talk about something that's never happened in Packers history until this past weekend. That's right. Two overtime wins in a row. What? We'll also go over some playoff scenarios and, of course, our thoughts on the King in the North returning to the Packers squad. That means winter's coming, and we will talk again about some injuries Stay tuned for some fun stuff from the official Packers dope sheet for Packers at Panthers. Can we beat the Panthers? Troy has some keys to victory for the Packers, and we've got more of your great G-Force feedback. And me, I'm at Wayne Henderson, the voice acting podcasting part owner of your 13-time NFL champion Green Bay Packers, and it sure has not been easy to R-E-L-A-X as a Packers fan very much lately. It sure has not. And wishing my spin move was half as good as Devontae Adams, I'm at Troy Heinrichs, your gold ticket package holding part owner of your 13-time NFL champion, Green Bay Packers. The Packers Fan Podcast is available on demand and on the go with our free Packers Fan Podcast apps. They're available for iOS and for Android. And it is a great way to listen to this show when you're on the go this holiday season. Yes, because we know people are going to and fro, family outings, shopping, returns. Take us with you. Speaking of going to and fro and returns. <laughs> tell us all about it, Troy. Trevor Davis. This man, let me tell you, it seemed like he was poised for something big. And boy, oh boy, did he deliver when we needed it most. Special teams NFC player of the week. Really? Well, that's quite an honor and well-deserved because we have been waiting all season knowing that, oh, he was so close, so close. And when he broke it this week, it was just amazing. Dude is fast. Really fast. Shifty, too. <laughs> you know who else is shifty? This amazing emerging running game. One Williams still making it happen. Now his running game wasn't on par this week. And it's surprisingly, the Browns defense is a little bit scary to look at for the first half of the game. Mm -hmm. But... We somehow figured out a way to make him into the Matt Forte of the Green Bay Packers because he's catching balls left and right out of the backfield. Still had a very impressive stat line for the fantasy football fans. So Williams doing it again in the air this time. Any way we can get it done. I am just glad that he's not dropping the ball, that he's making these catches when they're needed most. And talking about things we needed most, Devontae Adams continues his streak of being awesome this season. That game-winning touchdown run straight into the tunnel, game over. Man, I wait my entire life to see things like that. <laughs> Just boom, touchdown and right out the tunnel. That was amazeballs. And he, wa and he wasn't alone. Other Packers followed him. They're like, yeah, it's over. <laughs> we got places to go, people to see. Caroline is waiting. Carolina is waiting indeed. Oh my goodness. But the great thing about this game was I was really excited and not that we shouldn't have expected it to be this way because it is the Browns after all, but when you're down by two touchdowns, it's pretty impressive that we were still able to actually win the time of possession battle for this game, almost 36 minutes for the pack. So good job on controlling the game and getting it to our style. And it just, some of those third downs just didn't go our way. There was one in particular that just was a real weird decision on third and one to, to chuck the ball down the field into coverage. 
So I don't know if that was a play call or if that was an audible that Hundley had, but yeah, at least the time of possession was looking good. So let's keep it, keep it on that side. Yeah. And if you've listened to the Packers fan podcast for any length of time, you've heard from Troy on numerous occasions, talk about how important time of possession is. You know, it's also important is that when you get a penalty against the other team and you get a free five yards, to not fall start on the next play so that you lose the five yards you were just given. That's a face palm right there. That is fundamentals or lack thereof. Um, I had a question for you, Wayne. What was with the offensive line in that late first into the second quarter? It looked like they couldn't stop a mouse, let alone a freight train. I mean, it was like Civ City during that first half of the football game. Civ City. I like the uh, <laughs> the nickname there. As far as an answer to your question, Troy, no, I don't know what was going on. Um, just one of those days. I mean, they were they were coming in every single gap. I mean, it was like, man, put your fingers in the dam because the water is flowing through. And it Browns are following. It was bad. I don't know what was going on. They luckily they corrected it in the later half of the game. But man, they're again the second level. When you get between those linebackers and the and the safeties and cornerbacks in that second level, there's just no pass coverage. I don't know how many times we saw long plays down the field again into the middle of the field, coming out on the slant on the post. I mean, it's just it it, it doesn't matter that 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 second level just is barren. And I don't know if it's because of the man defense that they're playing, or if people just aren't fast enough to keep up with the receivers because of the way our our linebackers are positioned right now. I wish I knew the answer to that particular problem because year in and year out for at least three years, that's been a big sore subject and it's got to get fixed. I mean, I know we can't fix it really for the rest of this season. Just everybody try harder, please. But for next season and beyond, this cannot be one of our Achilles heels. Well, I was excited to see that we didn't give up 400 yards on defense this time. Woo! <laughs> But it was against the Browns, so that was also expected. But what happened to the run defense this week? 136 yards for the Browns running attack. Uh, head scratcher. I don't. I. I sure hope that isn't the case next week, because otherwise we're doomed. <laughs> Good point. Oh, it, sorry, it is Star Wars week. My bad. <laughs> we're doomed. Can't wait! Can't wait! I mean, we we have Star Wars. We've got the Packers, Panthers, and other pivotal games that play into the Packers future that we're going to talk about later on. Lots of stuff is happening, Troy. Lots. Including new voicemails from new callers. Hey, guys. Grant from Des Moines, Iowa here. Um, just calling in because wanted to get your thoughts on this scenario. So, Rodgers, most likely back. Let's say he finds a way to win the next three at Carolina. Tough game at Lions, tough game, and then against the Vikings, another tough game. Big S if they win those. But say they do succeed in the playoffs, what makes you think that this team is any different than a team in years past? Because right now I'm seeing the same story as every single year. Rodgers is great. The defense stinks. Is he going to be good enough to cover up all of those warts on the defensive side of the ball? Um let me know your thoughts. Thanks. Go back. Go. Uh, Grant, it is the same team. I mean, <laughs> how many 400 yard games have we given up this year so far? The problems that we're having right now are the pass rush and the pass rush is non-existent. And when there's no pass rush, the secondary cannot cover the receivers as long as possible. So the only way we're going to go deep into the playoffs, that's assuming we even get there is of course, with one AR 12 who is back. That might be back. He is back. Uh, your voicemail came in before the news broke, so that's okay. We forgive you. <laughs> but yeah, it, the only way it's going to happen is that if Aaron Rodgers can stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with the opposing offenses because their defense is still very lackluster. And even if we go somehow magically all the way to Minneapolis, where Wade and I will be watching, then I I have to say, Don Capers, it's, it's just time. It's just time. Yeah, because there's been so many seasons, like you allude to, Grant, that we hobble along, we make it to the playoffs, we even make it deep into the playoffs, and we don't take that final step other than that magical season, which 
when you think of it is like seven, eight years ago, but at the same time, anything can happen any week. And if Aaron does help us win these final three games and a few other things fall into place, which I think they will, who knows what could happen. And in the AFC, as long as it's not the Steelers and the Patriots, I'm so sick of them. Let's bring in the Chargers or the Jaguars. Somebody different to play the Packers in the Super Bowl would be nice. I'm all about the Jaguars team this year, man. Those guys are looking sharp down the stretch. Be cool to see them do some damage. Yeah, something different. And <laughs> after watching Jay Cutler and the Dolphins play like, you know, superstars and demolish the Patriots the other night, who knows? What was it? That was like 10, 10. Third or third downs they didn't convert or something like that. I was like, wow, is that Tom Brady playing? <laughs> oh, well. So anyway, Grant, thank you so much for giving us a call at 9203-PAC-GO. So go ahead, jot that number down and keep it handy so you can be part of the show next week. Give us a call at 9203-PAC-GO like Rick did. Hey, William and Troy, this is Rick from Wisconsin calling. I hope it's okay to use this line since I'm not actually a Packer fan, but my wife is. Uh, I've been itching to call the show, but I keep missing the deadline. This season, before any games were played, my wife and I went over the schedule, and my prediction then was that both the Packers and the Panthers would end up maybe losing three games this season. And when they play each other, would be an important game. Well, not exactly what's happened, but it is still an important game. So my prediction is the Packers' short winning streak is going to come to an end. <clears throat> I've been watching the games, and Hunley's done all right, um, but I don't think they have enough to beat Carolina. So sorry to have to tell you that, Wayne. And Troy, I know you won't believe me anyway because you've been dissing on them for the last three seasons, but... We'll see what happens. I may have to call back and eat crow, but my wife would say, go pack, go. Bye. Rick, thank you so much for that. And it rhymed there at the end. So that was an extra bonus. So good to hear from you at 9203-PAC-GO and a split household, half Carolina, half Green Bay. Um, Rick, we appreciate your call, but we're hoping that it's your wife that's extra happy Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I agree because we could only hope that this is what one of those Cam Newton blow up games where he's so overconfident that he just underestimates yes. the power of the potential Packers defense because we saw the really good Packers defense go up against Seattle. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's capable. It's the same guys. So really their biggest challenge right now is is in the pass rush. If we can get a pass rush, that's great because if we can't get a pass rush, then we got a blitz. And if we blitz, oof, then we're then it's scary because then people are open down the field. And Cam Newton will eat us up. Yeah, I would rather see Kenny Clark and Clay Matthews make a few sacks in this game for huge losses. Keeping my eyes peeled, guys. Keeping my eyes peeled. Like a banana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a banana. Because that's what Steve's eating in uh, Palos Park, Illinois. As he's beginning to think that this was going to be the worst Sunday for football fans ever. Now, Troy, being from the Chicago area, which I am, uh, wondered if you were aware that WGN-TV had one of their news anchors retire this past Friday, Mark Sapelsa. I did know that. Mark was awesome to watch. Uh, he had been on 35 years in the news, but he was a closet Packers fan, and he was anchoring the 5, 6, 9, and 10 p.m., and what happened was, was that as they were signing off for his last broadcast, WGN-TV had President Mark Murphy on the line to wish Mark all the best in his endeavors post broadcasting. So I thought that was pretty cool that Mark Murphy paid him uh, a little message there. Packer fans unite. But here's what the real reason why I thought Sunday would have been the worst day in football, because in the third and fourth quarters, that green Bay Packers team was losing to the Browns of all teams. And the bears were dismantling the Bengals 33 to seven. Luckily the Packers came back to win in overtime. And while they are lucky, that they won, but it's also like you say, a win is a win. And my thinking was that if they could beat the Browns, that they didn't deserve, if they couldn't beat the Browns, they didn't deserve to go to the playoffs. But the Packers still need to play better than they did today, and all these games are must-wins if they want to make the playoffs, even though two of our three final games are of the regular season are against division foes, 
the Lions and the Vikings at home. I see Carolina beat Minnesota while the Detroit beat Tampa. So it's all going to come down to the last few games of the season. And yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see even how this all plays out because the playoff scenarios are getting tighter and tighter because of that Vikings loss to the Panthers. Yeah, absolutely. Because each week, a few more teams fall out of contention and on the far side of the bubble, Packers are hanging in there. But yeah, every game that does not go our way just makes it that much more difficult. I'm not saying unlikely. I'm just saying difficult. And going back to Rick really quick, the, um, the, the 13 and three prediction from Rick is spot on because if you think about it, if we won that new Orleans game, the Baltimore game and the Pittsburgh game, boom, we're like right there with uh, three losses. So, uh, just it's, it's amazing what happens when tides turn and tides turn in crazy ways. And guess what? The tide is turning back in our favor. Oh yeah. <laughs> and not everybody's super excited about it, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. Stay tuned here on the Packers fan podcast. Also got an email from Caleb in Merrill, Wisconsin. Just wanted to say that Brett Hundley is getting a lot better. He had some great runs and another person who did well was Devonte Adams especially in overtime. All in all, I can't wait till AR-12 returns, but no matter what, go Packers. Bleed green and gold till dead and cold. Go Pack Go, Caleb. Go Pack Go, Caleb. Thanks so much for checking in. Yo, it's interesting. This this conversation today, it's all pins and needles. I can't wait to hear what happens with Roger's collarbone. I can't wait to hear. And then all of a sudden the news came out and everybody's like, well, Maybe they shouldn't play him. <laughs> um, like, a few of our Packer super fans, fans have mentioned that as well. Not ha- like, like we can never be happy. Like, Hey, we won, but it was a crappy win. Hey, we lost, but it was a great loss. Hey, <laughs> Rogers collarbone is fixed, but maybe you shouldn't play because we still got a long way to go to make the playoffs. <sighs> Just breathe. That's all you can do. Breathe. Are you channeling faith Hill? Isn't that one of her big hits from back in the day? Plus, she did like the opening, didn't she, back in the day also on Sunday Night Football? Yes. Before Carrie Underwood? Um, Yeah, before Carrie Underwood, after the first season where they did it with Pink. Oh, that's right. That's right. They were all cha- uh, channeling the Joan Jett and the Black Hearts song, I Hate Myself for Loving You, and changing the lyrics for Sunday Night Football. And now they've got that really bizarre song that they use. But <laughs> it's still better than whatever that intro music to Thursday Night Football is. They have intro music on Thursday night? <laughs> kind of. I don't know. I, I, guess, I guess people would have to watch Thursday night football in order for them to hear that. Oh, snap. Well, we did have our weekly Monday poll out on Twitter and in our Packers Fan Podcast community Facebook group. Because it's been a lot of stressful close games, wanted to know, how are you recovering from the stress of that huge come-from-behind overtime Packers victory? Hashtag Go Pack Go. 21% of the people that voted on Monday said they still haven't caught their breath. 43% voted and said, I'm not sure how many more close games like this I can take. 36%, 36% said, no worries. I knew all along that we had victory in the bag. <laughs> Monday, Monday morning quarterbacks in that 36%, yeah, 36%, I think. 36%. And we even had a write-in vote for this team is going to be the death of me. I hear you there. I hear you there. Oh, now this is the first time in Packers history that we've come back and won three games from being down 14 points. Crazy. And that's, and I, and I think all three of those were also all overtime wins. That That is kind of unbelievable that it's the first time ever. I know it's a rare occurrence for any team, but considering the Packers are closing in on their 100th anniversary i would have thought it would have happened a few times i mean right now it seems like with these three the the Bengals game the browns game the buccaneers game i feel like detroit like we're the fourth quarter comeback kids all of a sudden where's matthew stafford is he on our team uh he's not on our team good (laughs) (laughs) good we'll find out the last game of the year that we will (laughs) that we will we got big ones in between now and then. Now, we did have a few comments from the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook community group. Please go ahead and join the group at PackersCommunity.com. Brett Connor in the UK says, run the table, 
2.0 is still on. I don't know how much longer I can hold out with these close games. I can't look. Especially if you're watching in the UK because these games get later and later. Now that Rogers is back, we'll go back to 3 o'clock potentially. Oh, that would be very nice. Or 4 o'clock in the Eastern time zone. Oh, okay. Uh, Granny Cheese said, and Packers win. Fans should never doubt their team, especially not the Green Bay Packers, the greatest franchise in the world. Not to mention, it's America's team, too. Texas loves our Packers. Go, Pack, go. Uh, Bryant Lopez checked in as well. I'll happily take a Packers win, but that was a rough game to watch. Pack looked lethargic in the first half. Yes, they did. And seeing the score at 721 nearly had me in tears especially because of that botched fourth down in the red zone. Though I like the call to go for it. That said, 20 unanswered points by the Pack says all it needs to about their ability to come back when all hope seems lost. Hopefully a foreshadowing of the rest of the season and playoffs potentially. Also, can't decide if the Browns are better than their record reflects or if this was just a classic heart attack pack at work. May I remind you that they lost four games this year by less than three points. Mm-hmm. Art attack pack, indeed. Yeah, yeah. So the Browns are not a bad team. They just can't close it out. So it must have Marvin trickling in from some Ohio influence there from a team farther south in, in the state. Uh, <laughs> yeah, even, but, you know, in this past season, they've come pretty close to beating some of the big teams in their division and elsewhere in the AFC. So close. Like you said, they just can't close it out, which was yeah. quite evident in overtime this week. I mean, they hung with Pittsburgh, so I mean, yeah. they're not they're not awful. So either way, Hundley's no MVP, but he's filled the slot and is a resounding good enough. Hope to see A. Ron back in Carolina, because that'll be a huge challenge for the Pack is with a less than godlike quarterback. And I'd love to see how it all comes together with the run game as well, with Aaron behind the saddle. All love to the Pack. Go Pack, go! Awesome stuff, Bryant. Thank you so much for that. And. I don't know if Hundley's going to, you know, after this season, if it does look like he might end up being traded, if he's going to say, hey, look, I've got all these resounding, quote unquote, good enough. Uh, so I'm good enough. But I'm sure glad that he was our backup quarterback during some of these past few games, because although some of his passing hasn't been all that impressive, uh, his running ability has saved our bacon. And even though he only plays really good for 25 minutes, the 15 in the fourth quarter and the 10 in overtime. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, he's done a serviceable job. He's, it's not awful. You have to you have to give him credit. He kept us in it and he did his job and that's exactly what he's paid to do. There do you your go. job, keep winning and make sure we don't fall out of contention until A-Rod comes back and Aaron is here and it's going to be a tough one in Carolina. <laughs> tough, tough, tough one because Ahmad Brooks is still out. Quentin Dial, limited participant. Dimitri Goodson still a, a limited participant with the hamstring. Oh. De- Devon House, the injury I guess was you know worse than it looked with the with the shoulder and the back issue, so he's probably not going to play. Josh Jones didn't participate today. Now it wasn't injury related, and if Josh Jones can't go, that'll be an issue. So we'll have to keep an eye on Josh Jones. Uh, then we had Nick Perry still having an issue with the foot shoulder, and Jake Ryan with the knee did not participate today. So. When you think about it, we really have an issue at the cornerback position, and we're starting to play more safeties in cornerback roles, mm-hmm. which is is hard for some safeties to make that transition over. So we really got to figure out how to s- protect the cornerbacks and protect the safeties, and that starts up front with the front seven. And it's scary as heck to watch when you see people being kind of realigned on the defense, and you're just like, I hope he can do it. But yeah. on the other side of the ball, I mean, Carolina's got a lot of injuries they're dealing with as well. Maybe not as high profile and in those very important uh, safety and cornerback type areas, but they're no healthy team either. Yeah, I mean, Julius Peppers is still out there, if you can I, believe it. I miss Julius Peppers as a Packer. Uh, but yeah, Julius Peppers, not a non-participant. Jonathan Stewart, a non-participant at the running back position. And Cam Newton was a limited participant with his shoulder. So maybe he's not going to be as effective with that shoulder injury mm, uh, as he that, was in the past. That'd be too bad. Um, also, uh, selfishly, I hope Devin uh, Funches, as I like to call him. I don't think that's how you pronounce his name, but that's how it's spelled. 
but uh, Devin Funches uh, because someone picked him up off the waiver wire ahead of me. So I hope he doesn't play. <laughs> oh, in fantasy football? Okay. In fantasy football. <laughs> and I, he, is, uh, he, is, he is a limited participant today with a shoulder injury in practice, so we'll see what happens. Mm. And then, uh, of course, on the transaction side, even though Aaron was medically cleared to play, according to Aaron... <laughs> I always found that funny, too. That wasn't from the doctors or the team statement. It was Aaron's Instagram post that said, hey, I'm all good, guys. That was an epic Instagram post. And, I mean, you know, when it comes down to it, let's see. If we're going to post this out on social media, who has more followers, the team doctor or Aaron Rodgers? I don't know. Maybe uh, Doc McKenzie's uh, following went up a little bit higher after the whole um, Rotellis Bennett situation. That's true. Got some support. (laughs) That was a debacle. Let's talk uh, playoff scenarios then. So because Minnesota did not do their job, just like the Vikings right on time for their collapse, um, I don't know if that'd be that big of a collapse, but it was still a pain in the butt to see Carolina pull that one off. We're in a situation now where uh, Seattle did lose, so we need Seattle to lose one more time. So everybody is cheering for the Rams this week. That is the number one goal. The Rams have to beat the Seahawks because then we'll be even with them at six six uh, losses apiece. And own the tiebreaker. So if we keep winning and Seattle loses to the Rams, instantly that'll shuffle the quote-unquote on the bubble picture of the NFC playoffs. Then we have the conundrum. So if we keep winning, that will hand Carolina one loss. Atlanta, unfortunately, still needs two losses. So we are kind of in a pickle where if you look at it from what's left on the schedule, Atlanta could lose two times, but may only lose once. And the Panthers, well, they could lose two times, but it all depends on what Atlanta does. So Atlanta plays the Panthers the last game of the season. And I think there is a situation in which depending on how that game goes, we could actually miss the playoffs even if we went out. So I think right now the the best thing that we could do right now is just worry about this week, obviously not saying that like I'm McCarthy or anything, but take care of business this week and beat Carolina because they have to lose two as well. So we'll give them their first loss this week and cheer for the Rams because I think that puts us in the driver's seat the rest of the way. Yeah. And when in doubt root against anybody in the NFC South, just That's safe. pretty much it. Yeah. Make sure the NFC South just gets torpedoed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we, it's fairly simple, at least for this week. Go so Packers, all that- go Rams, and go anybody who's playing the NFC South. Right, right, right. So the big question there is, with all of that uncertainty, do you think it's smart to bring Rodgers back in? Definitely. I mean, I'm of the opinion that you got to bring him back. If he's ready to play... A, he's ready to play. He wants to play. The NFL needs Rodgers out there to bring back even more eyeballs and more excitement to the game. You know, as long as he's medically cleared and they say it's safe to play, I say play him. Even yeah, if we were out of the playoff picture. And I think the big thing here is that he's a he's a consummate uh, leader. He's a consummate fighter. He wants. He's a consummate competitor. He wants to make sure that 100% he's on top of his game. And so just him being out there on the field elevates everybody else, including the defense. Exactly. Exactly. And so it gives you your best chance to win. And I think given the Martellus Bennett situation this year and the fact that Aaron and Jordy and a bunch of other people have said numerous times, you know, Doc McKenzie does not pressure people to come back out on the field and play. That, yes, even if Aaron was saying, I want to go out, coach, put me in, Doc McKenzie would have said if he didn't think it was completely medically healed to a point where he could actually play and take some blows, Doc would have said, heck no, you're not going out there, especially with a franchise quarterback. So if he's cleared, you put him in, plain and simple. Amen to that. And it's not to say that we are not going to be nervous if anybody gets through the line and does a sack against Aaron Rodgers, we will be nervous, but that's the name of the game. I just want him to play against Minnesota so we can stick it to him for 
exactly agree, Troy. We, as the, the entire Packers organization, when we play on that Saturday night in what is now turning into a very snowy Wisconsin, bring those indoor playing Minnesota Vikings to Lambeau and get revenge for breaking our quarterback. Not, you know, not breaking their quarterback, but just revenge by just smoking them, uh, demoralizing them to the point where the Vikings, even if they make the playoffs, will not be able to perform and win a game. Yeah, I'm you not think bitter. Hate, yeah, you think we hate the Bears, but you know what? We really hate the Vikings. <laughs> yes. Really hate the Vikings, really hate the Seahawks. But on a positive note, you know who we love? We love Mark Tauscher and Ryan Longwell. And this summer, they will complete the journey from wide-eyed uncertain rookies to the Green Bay Packer Hall of Fame. Uh, the seventh-round pick in the Packers' 2000 draft, Tauscher became the starter at right tackle in the second game of his rookie season. He played in a 134 games total with 132 starts during an 11-year career spanning from 2000 to 2010. He was part of an offensive line that helped the Packers set team records for rushing 2,558 yards and average yards per carry five yards in 2003. And also for the fewest sacks allowed, which was 14 in 2004. That's still when Brett Favre was playing, if you keep in score. Oh, yes, because I have Mark Tauscher's autograph and William Henderson's uh, from my first ever trip to Lambeau Field during that uh, faithful 4-12 and season. But I did get to meet the two of them and get their autographs. And uh, yeah, uh, Mark Tauscher seems like a very smart man. Now, although he toyed with free agency a couple of times, Tauscher played his entire career in Green Bay. The Packers did not offer Longwell on the other side of the coin a contract after the 2005 season, but then he was Green Bay's leading scorer, but he had priced himself out of the market, so he signed with the Minnesota Vikings. Again with the Vikings, Favre, Longwell, and others. Jennings, yeah. Uh, Longwell said playing at least half his games in a dome stadium extended his career he is the second leading scorer in Packers history and ranks third overall for the Vikings. Really? Uh, yeah. Mm. Well done. Well, with 1,054 career points with the Packers, Longwell was the team's all t uh, all-time leading scorer until he was passed by Crosby in 2015. Granted, the kicker scored the most points because he get three. Uh, he led the team in scoring for nine straight seasons from 97 to 2005 and finished his career with 226 field goals and 376 extra points. Longwell scored 600, 964 points from 1997 to 2004, which was the most in the NFL during that time. And he scored in a team record 144 straight games from 97 to 2005 and concluded his NFL career with a total of 1,687 points. That's impressive. Very impressive. That's a lot of points. I would like some of those carried over to this Sunday's game. Now, besides going into the Hall of Fame, both men are also active in the community, as well as Tauscher continues his association with the Packers on various radio gigs, especially on ESPN in Milwaukee. Now, Tauscher and Longwell will be inducted into the 48th Hall of Fame induction banquet on July 21st, 2018 in the Lambeau Field Atrium, they will be the 160th and 161st inductees overall. That's a lot of Packers Hall of Famers. Yeah, Congratulations, kudos guys. Kudos to them. Very, very fun to see uh, all these old names. It's like we start, we're starting to feel Wayne like our, like our grandfathers a little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember when Tausch played back in the day. Yeah, back when they really played football. <laughs> And July 21st, that's around the time of the annual owners meeting. Yeah, it should be either probably like just the day before or day after in that Perfect. same kind of weekend, right when right when training camp starts up. So uh, lots of fun festivities up there in July at Lambeau Field. I'd love to go one of these summers, but it may not be next year. With that, we look at the third of our eight playoff game scenario. I can't <laughs> wait till can't... we're to the eighth one, but one game at a time. Run the game at a time. And that new hashtag, it sounds like it'll be rise again from uh, Aaron's uh, Instagram feed. So hashtag rise again and rise again. The pass rush must do because without a pass rush, we are screwed <laughs> because if we don't do a pass rush, we need to blitz. I mean, if we blitz, 
then we have to look at what happened to the Saints a few weeks ago when they played against the Panthers. Uh, the Saints actually backed off in the first half of the 31-21 victory over the Panthers, only to watch Newton complete 8 of 11 passes for 101 yards and a touchdown. When they turned up the heat in the second half, Newton completed just 9 of 16 passes for 82 yards and a touchdown. So pressure on Newton is the biggest key to this game. Uh, secondly, you got to look at that run defense from last week. So we need to figure out how to make this team one dimensional and then turn up the heat. So run defense needs to rebound. And then of course, control time of possession, you know, Aaron Wright Rogers might be back. He's not going to throw 30 times in this game. I'm sure doc has a limit on how many times that rotator cuff and that shoulder pocket are going to crank around a few times. So I think eating up the clock early, getting ahead early, letting Williams kind of ground and pound it. I think that is definitely our game plan this week. Just let let the running game keep doing what it's been doing, and Rodgers will be able to find those open seams as that running game develops. I'm excited. Let's make that happen. Those, Even just those keys so far just sound fantastic. And that's all the keys I have. So, Oh, well, they, fantastic. They, they, they sound great at the end, too. Let's do it, Packers. It can be done. Carolina is definitely not unbeatable. Let's not look past them for our grudge match against the Vikings. Well, it's time for the highlights from the official Green Bay Packers dope sheet for week 15's Packers at Panthers game. And we'll link to the whole thing because there's a lot more in there than what you would expect this week at PackersFanPodcast.com slash 149. I'm sure there's going to be a tidbit somewhere in there about Dom Capers used to coach for the Carolina Panthers. Spoilers? At least they're not Star Wars spoilers. You got to stop those and nip those in the bud. The 7-6 and six Green Bay Packers go to Charlotte to play the 9-4 and four Carolina Panthers Sunday, again, 12 noon Central. The Packers are 9-5 and five overall against Carolina, including playoffs with wins in six of the last nine games. Ooh. And this is the first December game in Carolina for the Panthers since 1997, which was a 31-10 win by Green Bay. And the Packers have scored 29-plus points in each of the last six games against the Panthers. I like that. And three of the last four matchups between Green Bay and Carolina have been decided by eight points or less. So that's not quite as exciting. Uh, and the first time the two teams played was in that very famous NFC Championship game, January 12th, 1997 in Green Bay, when Kevin Green was a Carolina Panther and was excited to be at Lambeau Field. But either way, the Packers beat the Carolina Panthers 31-13. to Can I get a Go Pack Go? Go Pack Go! And a notable connection, spoilers, Packers uh, defensive coordinator Dom Capers served as the first head coach in Carolina franchise history from 1995 to 1998, guiding the Panthers to the NFC Championship game in just his second season, which was just the second season of the Carolina Panthers. And that was a wild year. Remember that uh, the Jaguars and the Panthers were both in their second year of existence and made it to the championship games. I think that's because of the way those teams were built, right? You actually got to an expansion team comes in, you get to like cherry pick some free agents first and stuff. So they really had a good core built from the get go. So made it really easy to be able to jump in there into the playoff fray pretty, pretty easily. It didn't work as well for the expansion Houston Texans, though. But ah, that's because they were already a team. They just moved and came. <laughs> no, just kidding. But um, needless to say, that was a wonderful time, especially because the Packers and Brett Favre went on to win the Super Bowl. So get yourselves ready with the full official Green Bay Packers dope sheet for this game at PackersFanPodcast.com slash 149. Well, I hope it's going to be a wet, muddy mess down there in Car in Charlotte. Uh, 55 degrees with a 50% chance of showers. I think this is going to be a nice sloppy game. So that way, Williams can just keep it on the ground and churn it out and take us all the way to a Packers W. That's kind of interesting that for Aaron Rodgers' first game back, potentially, where it could be rainy and maybe not optimal for him throwing the ball anyway. I know. 
That's yeah. okay, though. We got a running game now, so Aaron doesn't have to do everything himself anymore. I still can't believe we actually have a running game. <laughs> We've been waiting, 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 waiting. Well, Troy, wait no more. Last week, I am going to yield the floor to you because you guessed the Packers side of the score 27 to 10 over the Browns, and uh, we had 27 points, right? So we win in overtime. Woohoo! All right, well, hold your pants because I'm going to say in this one, the Packers win because as long as they keep winning, we can keep podcasting. So Packers 31, Panthers 28, and why not? It's a triple. It's a hat trick. We're going to overtime again. Oh, a third in a row overtime game. Now, of course, if it ends up being a, a third in a row overtime victory, I'm all for that, but... The old ticker. That's going to be tough. 31 28. Aaron, Aaron earns his money to come back from behind to tie the game, send it to overtime. Panthers uh, defense gets a stop, showing that we have a playoff caliber defense, which means that it goes to immediate sudden death. And the Packers drive to get the field goal for the W. Mm, nice. I'm actually almost on the same page th- this particular week. I'm not calling for overtime. I, I don't know if I dare. But I do think the Panthers are going to get 28 points, same as you. Uh, The Packers are going to get almost 31. We're going to get 30. So, again, way too close of a victory. But considering it's on the road, calling for a victory, Troy. All I care about is that it's on TV. I can finally watch a Packer game live again. It's not on TV here. Oh, to the sports bar. (laughs) Actually, my son here in town, uh, DirecTV gave him a special offer. Even though they aren't signing up for anything, they're giving them the NFL ticket for the last three games of the year. Well, lucky you. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And then, of course, the following week is Saturday night, so we almost all get to see that game. And then I don't know what's going to happen with the last week of the year. I guess it all depends on how things shake out and the potential in that uh, Lions-Packers game. Exciting time, Sir Troy. That game could still mean something if the Lions went out because if the Lions beat us, they could get into the playoffs. Let's not even think about that. Yeah, yeah. No silver helmets in the playoffs. Zero. Zero. None. Nada. Zilch. Don't it. <laughs> well, with that... It's time now for the Packers fan podcast. Patreon supporters are MVPs. Now, I first wanted to mention that uh, for those of you that have looked into supporting the Packers fan podcast on Patreon, or those of you that are, uh, Patreon went a little wacky over the past two weeks. They decided to try changing their whole mode of operation. And for a few days, thought, I know, let's have some of the people that are supporting podcasts out there Let's have them pay part of the fees. And there was an uprising. Stupid. (laughs) Stupid. I don't know what Patreon was thinking. So basically, just today, they announced, we're so sorry. We were dummies. We're switching it back to the way it was. Because that's crazy to make the people that are supporting podcasts and other creators out there to have them pay extra fees on top of what they're doing. charitably giving to the supporters of the show. So I'm so glad they turned it around. And I know that uh, some folks are no longer able to support the podcast right now, uh, whether financially, if that's the reason or because of the wacky Patreon nonsense. But as of the date of this recording, they have turned it back around back to the way it was back the way it should be. You can support at whatever level you would like to support the podcast and not have to pay any extra beyond that. Sounds awesome. So with that, we want to say thank you to Bryant for pledging his support for the Packers Fan Podcast at the Brett Favre $4 level. That is good stuff. And Jeff Summerfield, thanks again for being an MVP of the Packers Fan Podcast at the Brett Favre $4 level. Diane, you're out there supporting the show, Rain or Shine, so thank you for your Favre $4 Patreon support. You rock. And speaking of Rain or Shine, there could be rain this week. So, Diane, thank you very much. 
And Brett Favre is proud of the Texas only Green Bay Packers Fanatics Facebook group supporting again at the Brett Favre $4 level. Thank you so very much. And Aaron Peterson will always remember number four with his $4 Brett Favre level contribution. Thank you so much, Aaron. Now, you guys can make the podcast even better by going right to our website, PackersFanPodcast.com, and click the giant P in the top right-hand corner, or scroll down a little bit if you're on mobile, and you'll see the big P right there, and that'll take you right on over to the page. But, as Wayne mentioned, if you can't give on a monthly basis, that's okay. Just go to PackersFanPodcast.com slash Amazon. That's right, PackersFanPodcast.com slash Amazon, because people... We are literally, literally 12 days from Christmas. No so you way. Do all your shopping. They'll wrap it for you. They'll ship it wherever you need it to go, whether that's directly to mom's house or right to your house, wherever you want it to go. Amazon will take care of it for it. So if you go to PackersFanPodcast.com slash Amazon, we'll get a kickback of anything that you buy there at the store. And is it any coincidence that Patreon and Packers start with the same great letter of the alphabet, Troy? That's right. <laughs> P, look for the big P. Uh, thanks again, Diane, Bryant, Aaron, the Texas only Green Bay Packers fan addicts, and Jeff Summerfield for your awesome Patreon support of your Packers fan podcast. With that, we're going to get ready for Carolina and get the heck out of here. The unofficial Packers fan podcast is not affiliated with the NFL or the Green Bay Packers. However, if someone can make that happen, just tell them to email us at media at Packers fan podcast.com. I can't wait for that email to come through, Troy. Remember to listen to us on the go with our free Packers Fan Podcast apps, iOS and Android, and again, totally free. And follow us on Twitter, at Packers Fan Pod. We'll be live tweeting during the games, as well as our Monday Twitter poll, other shenanigans. And speaking of shenanigans, you can follow me on my personal Twitter account. I'm at Wayne Henderson. And me, I'm at Troy Heinrichs. Be sure to follow the new Packers Fan Podcast community group as well. Just visit PackersFanPodcast.com slash Facebook or PackersCommunity.com. Either one will take you there and join in on the conversation. And speaking of conversation, we'd love to hear some of yours for next week's show. So go to PackersFanPodcast.com slash feedback to get in your thoughts after the game because it's going to be awesome and we want you to let your voice be heard. Keep those conversations going. And thanks again for listening to this episode of your Packers Fan Podcast. Be sure to subscribe in Apple Podcasts and leave us a review as well so you do not miss an episode. Now we're going down to Carolina, everybody. We're going to take over that house. <laughs> so let's get all hyped up. Let's get excited. Let's cheer along and say, go, Pack, go. Go, Pack, go.